attending our Angela uh, webinar. My name is Michael Lance, a country representative for the Philippines. So, um, yeah, so we will just wait a couple of minutes before we start. Okay. All right. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in to our webinar at Angel Hack. My name is Michael Lance, the country representative of Angel Hack to the Philippines, and I'm very happy to have you watching our session this evening in our country, the Philippines. Um, noon time in the Central Europe and afternoon in India. Good evening good morning and good day to all of you okay. okay i think uh we can start now. Okay. So once again, thank you so much for tuning into our webinar at Angel Hack. And I'm so happy that uh, we see each other to learn new technologies. Okay. So um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Michael Lance Lumagas. I am a, uh, the country representative of Angel Hack to the Philippines and I am so happy that you are joining us in this moment to learn about what is Angular. Okay, so if you're a web developer, you're a software engineer, I think that this talk will be a great help on whatever projects, whatever uh, tasks that you will be doing in software development. Okay, so let's start. So, um, let me introduce to you about Angel Hack. So, um, Angel Hack is the world's largest and most diverse developer ecosystem. So, um, it only started with a very simple thought. Think. Think of coding as a new um, global language for change and innovation. And we believe that coding has the potential to empower, promote, and uh, equally open up new opportunities for all. So by, by building together diverse code creators and change makers from across the whole world, we aim to empower a community that pushes the boundaries of tech, develop more innovative ideas, and make positive change happen. So with innovation at our core, we provide opportunities for our global developer community to elevate their skills, work on emerging technologies, and work 
alongside renowned corporates that bring interested, interesting challenges to the table. At the same time, we help corporate change makers drive open innovation for products and brands by connecting them to the smart scale and speed of the world's best talents. So this is how we are driven by our vision. No? We wanted to empower code creators and change makers like you to develop bright and groundbreaking ideas. And this is what we really want to help you. We wanted to dedicate to everything in innovation and to bring the world's most diverse and brilliant minds to break boundaries of thinking and develop ideas to transform the digital economy. So Angel Hack has more than 260,000 developers in our community. We built more than 10,000 hackathon projects and we are present at more than 160 countries in the whole world. So we have hackathons, we have boot camps, incubators, and of course, the developer community, which strives its, its best to learn new technologies. So first we have hackathons. These are opportunities for innovators like you around the globe which drive um, innovation to build, test, and launch your ideas to the world together. So uh, since the past 10 years, Angel Hack has been organizing hackathons in more than 160 countries, in over more than 10,000 project submissions. So it is a very perfect ground for talents like you to get connected to the right people and use resources and tools to witness the birth of many groundbreaking solutions. So, so recently, we organized two hackathons. First is the Zapeto World Jump. It is a metaverse building event that uh, bring developers and people around the world to build the next, uh, the next world for the metaverse using the Zapeto app, one of the fastest growing metaverse platform. And our participants have a chance to win several prizes for, um, for, for our 150,000 US dollars prize pool. We also partnered with Polkada to organize the Hackathon Global Series Europe edition so that um, they have also the chance to win from the prize pool of 220,000 US dollars. So what is the most exciting part about this hackathon? Our finalists will be flown to Paris for pitching session at the in-person event. We also have boot camps. So boot camps are immersive, intensive learning program focused on teaching specific skills quickly. So it could be conducted online or in person. This and um. It is designed to be a demanding and rigorous um, boot camps that will be a way to gain new skills quickly and useful to their careers. Lastly, we also have incubators, which help and guide individuals interested to build and create new innovations and solutions from uh, their journey to MVP. So, the main aim of, of our incubator is to help teams get from zero to one of a project, including the opportunity to present their MVP and elevator pitch. And of course, lastly, our Angela community. We have a Discord channel, guys, which you can join. This is the space where we want to get be connected to as many developers as, as possible around the globe. So this community was created with the intention for developers to gather, share their wins, explore opportunities, and make new friends. So we are constantly providing, uh, improving our Discord channel to include community challenges and bounties, which will come with rewards such as cash prizes and swag. So in time to come, we envision this to be the space 
for current and aspiring developers will congregate. We also have a monthly newsletter, which uh, just last last year, so that uh, we will be kept informed on all the happenings in Angel Hack. So, like for example, from hackathon opportunities, articles about the tech ecosystem, and celebrating the wins of our community that uh, has achieved. And we want everyone in the space to be able to leverage on opportunities Angel Hack has to offer while celebrating everyone's achievements as we go along. So, whether you're a developer or not, we welcome you to this space and be part of this great family. So if you're not in already in our community, here's an invitation from me to join the community today. So once again, um, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to join our Discord server. Subscribe to our newsletter. Visit our website at angelapp.com. Visit our social media websites at LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Okay, now I think we are ready to start our session for this evening. You know, it's you know, as a software developer, as a web developer, especially um in these times, no, that we need to know more and keep updated of what's happening out there of different kinds of frameworks and tools for us to to, to use to um to to improve our coding skills and build wonderful projects i'm so honored and happy that we have here one of the most active tech communities in the philippines and um we're so happy that uh, we're joined by our esteemed guests from the Philippines so that they will uh, teach us or share their thoughts about what is Angular. Okay. So um, to introduce our speaker for today, okay, uh, for uh, to introduce our community lead from Angular Philippines, he is a uh, graduated cum laude with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in the University of Santo Tomas. He is currently a senior developer in KTN Netherlands, a Microsoft MVP, uh, Auth0 ambassador, and one of the community leaders of Angular Philippines, who is involved in organizing tech meetups, mentorships, and has written tutorials in his own website. He has been a speaker in several events and conferences in the Philippines and abroad. Help me welcome the community lead for Angular Philippines, Mr. Seiji Ralph Villapranta. All right. Yeah, so thank you, Lance, for that uh, wonderful introduction. So thank you, guys. Also, uh, thank you for Angel Hack Team for inviting us angular philippines again to have a session with you and yeah it's an honor for us to share our knowledge in angular or not just in angular in web development i suppose so yeah um my purpose here is just to introduce angular philippines so if you are interested to join us so i'll just have a short presentation for you guys okay So yeah, um, once again, uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, this in this session. So I know it's Saturday, it's supposed to be a rest day, but yeah, uh, we're still honored to have you guys and you are interested to learn about web development and Angular. So yeah, um, I would just introduce what is Angular PH. So technically Angular Philippines is one of the active communities in the Philippines. So all of you guys, developers and non-developers, you are invited to join our community. So yeah, um, I will share this slide later on in our chat. So you can also have the links on how you can join and what are our social handles. So um, you don't have to contact me. So you are free to join in our community. 
So yeah, um, Angular. What is Angular Philippines? So we are actually a non-profit tech community. So we, just like Angel Hack, also we are organizing different meetups, seminars, and conferences. Uh, right now it's only for the Philippines. So it's since we are uh, uh based all of our almost all, all all of our teams are based in Philippines. So all of our meetups, seminars, and conference are based in the PH. But um right now since we are just uh just in right now in the pandemic, so we are ha we're still having some hybrid or we are having uh virtual events. So you you are also free to join that, and yeah we are. Our community was uh, founded in 2016, so uh, still uh, we are still active in 2023 uh, to share our knowledge and information about web development and our and uh, other technology with you guys. So um, you can follow our page or you can join our group so you can be updated on our events. So we have a lot of events from meetups, podcasts, even uh boot camps and seminars and they are all free for you guys so yeah um we are founded on the uh, year 2016 so we are just group of developers and you can see in the picture that we started just around by 10 members so yeah um angular philippines was just uh made by developers for developers and right now here is our um Current community leaders, well, these are just some. So our family is growing and growing. So if you just, if other than being a member of Angular Philippines, so you are also invited to be a community leader. So if you are interested to be uh, to be involved in organizing events, uh, boot camps, or even sharing your tech, so you are invited to be a community leader in Angular Philippines. So yeah, um, starting from 10 members, we are now, uh, we now have 5,200 members in our Facebook group. We also have our Discord page where we share our knowledge, our uh, about information about web development, the new trends. So our family is still growing and growing. And uh, we want you guys to join us for you to be updated on the tech, uh, on the trends of uh, in the technology world today. So. Um, this coming 2023, so we also have, um, we have full stack of events for you guys. So we have some monthly meetup that, that is partnered with AWS and Education PH. We also, we will also have a face-to-face -face meetup that is also partnered with Microsoft. And also in Angel Hack, Steva, um, GDSC, PUP, and other school communities. So we are reaching out the best we can to share our knowledge with uh, not just with professionals, but also with students and especially the communities out there in the Philippines. So, uh, yeah, and we also have our Angular podcast. This is all free. And uh, recently, we have released our Angular PH portal and our new website. So you can register on our events easier and faster. And you can get all the certificates and the documents you need there for free. So. Also, right now we also uh, our one of our main events that is happening this 2023 is we have our Angular monthly meetup, and we also have uh, hackathons that we are currently working on, and also new features for Angular PH portal. So once you join our uh, community, so you will get all of these um, perks and benefits, especially the meetups. Uh, local uh, seminars and even the camps. So yeah, um, we have our own website. So if you want to contact us, if you are interested, not just joining as a member, but joining as a community leader, so visit our website, angularph.org. So all of our um, events uh, will be posted there. So if you want to be updated on our upcoming seminars, workshops, or even bootcamp, so just visit our uh, website. So we also have our portal. So this is portal.angularph.org. So this is actually uh, your personal account. So you can have 
you can track all of your registered events and also you can get your certificates uh, easier once you have attended the event. So after you have been a member of Angular Philippines, so you can also be a member on our Angular PH portal. So I will share this slide with you guys. So if you are interested, so I have listed all the links here. So we also ha we have our own Facebook group. So you can join there for free also. And we also have our Facebook page where you can see all of our live events and we where we'll, where we'll be stream our free seminars and workshop. And join us also on our Discord where you can share your own topics or you can even answer the questions or queries that you have that is related to technology. So yeah, um, you are free to join and you are welcome in our community. So that's it for Angular uh, Philippines. So I hope you guys, I see you there in our community. So Lance, uh, back to you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Mr. Seiji Ralph Villafranca. For more information about Angular PH, don't forget to visit the website at angularph.org. Huh? And uh, yeah. don't forget to yeah don't forget to visit uh or like their Facebook page and join the Facebook group and the Discord as well. No? Okay, I know that you're excited to learn more. What is Angular? No? What is Angular? So in this session, in this webinar, you will know the pros and cons of using Angular, like prerequisites, core concepts reactive programming, state management, and more. Okay, now to introduce our speaker for today. He is, uh, he graduated cum laude with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Computer Science at University of Santo Tomas. He is a self-taught full-stack developer with extensive experience working with startups and corporations, as well as freelancing across the world. Currently, he is working remotely with a company based in New York City and the head of the developers committee for Angular Philippines. So let's welcome our speaker for today. Mr. Machu Pui. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, everyone. So um, give me a minute to share my screen first. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? I think I have shared it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Lance and Seiji. So again, uh, my name is Matthew Uy. Uh, I am a full stack developer here in the Philippines. Um, it's been six years since uh, I've been in the IT industry and I have five years of experience uh, in Angular and in front-end technologies, okay? So before we start, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview about myself. So uh, it's been two years since I've been speaking uh, or sharing knowledge about Angular, okay? So uh, this talk is also about uh, introducing you to Angular. Actually, the title of this was actually Introduction to Angular, but then it's revised because uh, I have some other ideas that I could share with you. And since it's 2023, uh, I have did some changes because of there are some updates in Angular. Okay. So uh, I did speak in Cebu in November 18. It's also about this topic. And also in our event, which uh, I think it's December or November 2. So yeah, I did speak, speak at Microsoft in Makati office, okay? So let's start. <clears throat> okay. 
So for today's talk, um, my goal for you is to not, uh, let's not deep dive into the topics of Angular, but rather I'll give you an overview of everything you need to know when studying or learning Angular. Can you do me a favor also? Uh, can you please put in the comments if you're a student or you're a teacher or you're working so I would know how I would tackle my talk, okay? So the first one that we're going to talk about is what is Angular? Then why Angular? Why do we need to learn Angular? Or uh, why do we need to study Angular? Then let's compare Angular uh, to other frameworks and libraries. Then let's uh, look at the Angular core concepts. And the last one is the Angular roadmap, which is, I think, the most beneficial if you're trying to learn Angular. Okay. So here's the overview. And now let's uh, go to point number one with the definition of Angular. Okay. So according to Google, Angular is a front end framework with a component driven architecture made by the engineers at Google. It was developed back in 2010. This was Angular JS. So take note of the JS at the end because Angular right now is very different from Angular JS. And six years later, Google upgraded Angular JS to Angular version 2. So in 2016, it was Angular version 2. And right now in 2023, I think it's Angular 15 and will be become 16 maybe in a couple of months. Okay, so um, let's define what Angular is based on the definition because there are words that might be seem not familiar to you. So let's uh, define each of them one by one. So first is Angular is a front-end framework. So let's define a framework, okay? So in order to understand frameworks, I will give you a scenario. Let's say you're starting out as a developer and then the company assigned you to do four different projects, okay? So they're doing project one, project two, project three, project four. Using, uh, you're going to create a website on those projects, okay? And we know that when we're doing uh, websites, we need to use the three fundamental technologies, which, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? Okay, so in project number one, you use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, okay. Project number two, you also use it in number three and number four. And now, after doing that, you would notice that there are a lot of similarities on the, on the code that you did on those projects. So your, your thinking would be, okay, if these uh, codes are the same, then why not reuse this code instead of building it from scratch? Because it would save me time and energy and it also will also be beneficial for the company, right? So instead of uh, rewriting your codes, why not uh, reuse a code and then do it on other projects as well, right? So framework is basically, frameworks and libraries rather, are just a collection of pre-written code. So Angular, as we all know, it's a front-end framework. So if we use Angular in our, uh, when we're building websites, we don't necessarily need to create a code from scratch because Angular can be a helpful tool for us to reuse some codes, uh, which, will be, uh, which will be tackled later on, okay? So another, I'll give you an analogy to better understand this. So let's say we want to build a house, okay? And in order to build a house, we need bricks, right? And in order to build bricks, we need mud, right? So 
if you're if you don't have any experience, which do you think is more efficient? Do you have to get a mud and then build bricks? And then when you build a brick, you build a house or you build or you buy bricks and then build a house. So the correct answer is, The correct answer is you don't need to get a mud to build bricks. Instead, buy the bricks instead so it will save you time and energy. And that's what frameworks are. That's what the main purpose of frameworks and libraries are. So it abstracts you from, uh, or rather it's, it prevents you to become repeatable and instead you use uh, frameworks so that it will uh, help you in building your application. Okay. Then to better understand frameworks and libraries because uh, a framework and library, there are also some differences between them. So in terms of coding, let's say you're trying to build a code and let's say you want to get the sum of two numbers and you don't want to write a code about that. So you just get a library of some of the summation of two numbers and then plug it in your code. Then now you don't necessarily create a code for that. You just import it and then you plug it in your code and then you're done. But in, the, in terms of framework, what the framework does is instead of putting the library into your code, you put the code into the framework. So, and what the framework does, it, it can be a compiler. It can minify your uh, code so that it will, uh, so that the space could be uh, smaller. So when you put it on the server, it's not as heavy as when you just write it in vanilla JavaScript or HTML. So that's, that is one purpose of a framework. And also note that framework can also contain libraries. So again, Angular is a front-end framework with a component-driven architecture. Now let's define component-driven architecture. So in a component-driven or component-based architecture, um, an example of this is, let's say you have a website, Facebook, for, for instance. And if you try to look at the website of Facebook, we can group these, um, we call components, or this whole page, we can group it into smaller components or subcomponents so that if there are pages or if there are components that can be reused in other pages, we don't necessarily have to repeat ourselves again. Right, so that is one good thing also about Angular is that it's component based, so the data can be or the code can be reused multiple times. Okay, so Angular is a framework that makes it easy to build applications with the web. Okay, but if you think about it, there are a lot of frameworks in libraries. So the question is, why learn Angular? Why not React? Why not view? Okay. So this in this section, I have three reasons why we should learn Angular. Especially if you're a developer or if you are starting out, I'll give you three reasons why it's right now it's very good to learn Angular. So I have a compelling reason, the real reason, and the main reason. Okay. So the first reason is. Let's look at the graph right now. So this graph shows which is the most demanded framework. And by far, you will notice that React has 354,000 plus jobs compared to Angular, it only has 211,000 jobs. 
Well, VU has 64,000 and the others can be uh, Svelte or Quip or other front-end frameworks. It's 24, around 24,000. Now, if we look at the pie chart, so this is the same as the bar. It's just in a different graph. So we could see how big it is that React dominates by 54.18%. So that means it's a lot, right? And if you try to think about it, why Angular? Well, React has a lot of uh, available jobs. And let's look about let, let's look at the next graph. Now this is a line chart. So on the x-axis, these are the months of the year, starting from October 2021 to November 2022. And on the y-axis is the percentage as a whole or the total number of uh, jobs available per web technology. So again, React is at the top, it has 354,000. But notice this. In October 2021, the gap was massive, like around 20%, right? But as each month passes, the gap is slowly decreasing. So right now in uh, around October, November 2022, you would notice that the, the available jobs in Angular is increasing while in React, it's decreasing. Uh, I'm not sure why, but probably maybe the it has an effect on the mass layoffs of the farm companies. So if we think about it, if we continue the graph, we could say that Angular could possibly in the future surpass React in the availability of jobs. So now reason number one is the increasing job availability. You should learn Angular because there is a huge demand of Angular jobs right now. And I just want to share with you another graph that shows the availability of jobs per country. So if you look at here, the red one is the Angular, React is color blue, Vue is the green, and the others are in orange. So you would see React still dominates, but there are some countries like, um, I think Switzerland is around. 48% in Angular, and uh, France also has more Angular jobs than React. So it might be a good sign that Angular is increasing in availability of jobs. But still, most of the countries, um, it is React dominant. Okay. Now let's go to reason number two. Reason number two is kind of surprising because uh, Minko Getchev is a product head of uh, Angular in Google. And I have like to read about his tweets about Angular. And on January 20, around January 20 to February, uh, he tweeted the things or the upcoming things that will show in Angular. And he said that Angular will be big in 2023. So there would be some changes or massive changes in Angular this year, which we're not going to talk about since um, it's new and some of the things I still don't know. And the last reason is it has advantages over other front-end technologies. Now, this might seem too broad. So that is why on the next slide, we compare it to the most popular framework, React. Let's see the pros and cons of using Angular and the pros and cons of using React, okay? So let's look at the companies in 
Angular, and React. So Forbes, Sony, Google, Microsoft, and Upwork uses Angular, while Uber, Airbnb, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Netflix, and Dropbox uses React. And on the left side, these companies are more solid, while on the right side, they're more disruptive. Uh, the companies on the right kind of want a fast-paced uh, web technology, while on the uh, left side, they want a uh, framework that allows them to have an established way of doing things. So let's look at the learning curve of React and Angular now. So if you're a student, you would find it easy to study React because you only need the fundamentals, which is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS in order to understand React. But as you go along, it becomes a bit more difficult each time. And the reason being is that when you learn more in React, uh, especially if you're in a project, the and you move into another project, you might find that their way of doing things would be different because React is less opinionated, meaning you could be more versatile when you're doing when you're coding in React. Okay, so maybe you need a forms library. And there are tons of forms library out there that you could use. Also, there are a lot of routing, there are a lot of state management in React that you could use, right? So you might need to study a lot if, uh, if you're moving into from different from one project to another. But the point here is that you should be able to be good at adapting to different technologies and libraries. Okay. Now let's look at Angular. If you look at Angular, you would notice that the starting point is at the top. It's kind of difficult at the start. And the main reason is because in order to be good to code, in order to write code in Angular, you have to learn the Angular fundamentals, not just uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You need to learn TypeScript and you need to learn the Angular fundamentals, which are the libraries inside Angular can be a forms library, routing, uh, might be RxJS and their state management and other things, services, dependency injection, something like that. And as you go along, as you write code in Angular, it becomes easier and easier. And the reason why is because if you're familiar with the uh, patterns, design patterns in Angular, it will be easier for you to notice the different uh code the different way of doing their uh doing things so if let's say you're from one project and you move to another project you would notice that if you even if you switch from different projects you would see that it's very familiar to understand it's very easy and familiar and you're uh familiar the way you're familiarizing things, you would notice the patterns from the past projects to your to the current project. So that's how Angular is, and that's how Angular works. Now let's look at the differences in terms of uh, the technologies. Okay, so these are the technical differences. Angular is a framework, while React is a library. And Angular uses the real DOM, while React uses the virtual DOM. So the real DOM is the document object model. It's the one that we're manipulating if we want to have show different views, different structures. While the virtual DOM, what it does is it creates a copy of the real DOM, and then it on the virtual DOM. React is manipulating the virtual DOM. And then it syncs 
to the real dom, which is a process that's called I think reconciliation. Okay. Then the third point is that TypeScript is mandatory, while in React it's optional. So even if you don't know TypeScript, you could still do React. Then the fourth point is that Angular is highly opinionated, meaning there is a specific way of doing things. While in React, you're more free. You're, uh, it's very easy to experiment. Now, in the last point, in Angular, well, Angular has a two-way data binding, while React doesn't, but could still do two-way binding. It's just that you have to create your own um, function to do a two-way data binding in React. So what's a two-way data binding, if you ask? Well, two-way data binding is basically if you have a view, or let's just say HTML and JavaScript, in a one-way data binding, only one part of it is updated. Let's say on the JavaScript, or let's say I input number five on the input element. And then on the JavaScript code, the value does not update instantly. You have to create a get element by ID in order to update that code, in order to update that value. And if you change it to number six, it will still not update. But in Angular, if you update every time the number in the input uh, element, it will automatically update the JavaScript file or the controller or the component will automatically update because of its two-way data binding feature. Now, which should you choose? Okay, In terms of difficulty, if you're just starting out as a developer or a front-end web developer, React, I would say, would be easier than Angular because it's beginner friendly. Then now if you are an executive or you are creating a project and you have an existing development team, I would say that if they react, it would be harder to transition to Angular since because of the learning curve. But if you're an Angular developer, it would be not as hard as when if you're a React developer transitioning to Angular. Okay, then next question is in terms of your project, is it a quick release or a long-term viability? Because in React, it's easier to experiment and do quick release. While in Angular, it's harder to experiment, but it's easier to build apps with longer lifecycle support. And last is the project complexity. And it really depends, like we have to talk about it because, I mean, we have to, you know, narrow, uh, list it down the complexity of the project because it really depends on um, what kind of projects are you building? What are the, what is the market for this, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So I would say that, Still, both of the projects, uh, sorry, both of the uh, technologies for front end, either Angular or React, is still viable in 2023. Now, where should we start if we're trying to learn Angular? So, of course, we have to learn the fundamentals of web development, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I would say it will take us around two months or a total of 40 hours. Maybe that's two hours every day on the weekdays. So, and after that, we could learn JavaScript. So JavaScript, it would take around three months, I'd say, to be familiarized yourself in JavaScript. And then TypeScript, is not mandatory to learn, but it is mandatory in Angular. And the reason why is because when you're trying to learn Angular and you've already studied JavaScript, uh, it's easy to 
transition, it's easy to uh, get to know TypeScript along the way when you're learning Angular. So if you want to learn TypeScript, I would say it will take you two months because there are still um, more complex concepts in TypeScript, which later we will tackle the basic concepts. But for the complex uh, concepts, I would think that it's better if we have another talk for that. Then for Angular, the core concepts, I would say it will take five months. It might be long, but it would really depend on also on you if uh, on how uh, on how you should or your strategy in learning Angular. Because later I will show you the different or the Angular roadmap, which are the different concepts in Angular and which are the first things that you should learn. So I've divided it into the basics and the advanced concepts. And lastly, RxJS and NGRx. These are uh, used in reactive programming. So if you want a real-time based applications, uh, using RxJS and NGRx would be very helpful. So NGRx is more of a state management, but it requires RxJS to uh, function properly. So I'd say it will take around three months or 60 hours of studying RxJS and NGRx. Okay, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So for those who are not familiar with this, this is the most important in web development because every time you try to make a website, it will always go down to this tree. So our Angular code, it's compiled in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because TypeScript is compiled into JavaScript. And maybe for using not CSS, maybe SCSS or less or something, anything other than CSS, it's still going to be compiled into CSS. So what are these three? Okay, then HTML is the language of describing the structure of web pages. CSS is for the presentation. Well, JavaScript is the programming language of the web. It's used to update the document object model. To better understand this, I will give you an analogy. Uh, for example, a house. So if you try to look at the picture, the HTML is the structure. So what kind of house do you want? Is it a two bedroom, a one bedroom, an apartment, etc.? And then CSS is the styling. How would you want it to look like? Are they made of bricks? Are they made of uh, glass or wood? And then JavaScript are the functionalities that can be done inside the house. So example of that is eating or sleeping, watching television, taking a bath, etc. Okay, now we're done with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's proceed to TypeScript. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So as you can see on the right side, um, we have TypeScript, uh, which is the biggest circle in the Venn diagram. And then JavaScript, you'll notice that there is an ES5 and ES6. ES5 and ES6 are also JavaScript. It's just that we try to distinguish the version of the JavaScript. So ES6 is the latest version, but I think there is an ES7, though I'm not sure. So the difference is that ES6 is now using classes and modules, but in ES5 and below, we're not using that. But still ES6 is a JavaScript. So now JavaScript superset, the definition of TypeScript. Then browser can compile TypeScript. So 
if we can't compile TypeScript, then how do we do it? So a compiler. TypeScript is also a compiler. It's not only a JavaScript superset. It's also a compiler. It compiles TypeScript, TypeScript code into JavaScript. And it's a strongly typed programming language. So what do we mean by strongly typed programming language? Since JavaScript is a weakly type, meaning the types of variables in JavaScript can be uh, different. Uh, I mean, in TypeScript, we assign a type, while in JavaScript, we don't assign a type because um, the developers of TypeScript want uh, JavaScript to be more um, maintainable in the long run. And if we're coding in a weekly type uh, programming language, the problem is that if there are more developers into your project, it will be difficult for a developer to determine what kind of uh, type this variable is, right? And later on, we will uh, tackle this in my examples, okay? So now, these are the examples. So on the left side, <clears throat> you will notice that this one is a JavaScript code. And what it does is it uh, has two parameters, which of A and B, and then it returns the sum of these two numbers or these two variables, okay? So now, if we convert it into a TypeScript code, you will notice that on the uh, parameters, it's requiring a type of number in order to run the function. So if you also notice that on the add function, the number five with the double quotes has now this spread squiggly under that, right? And I think you know the reason why. It's because we are inputting a string, but the function is saying we need a number. So now it produces an error on your uh, IDE. So it will say argument of type string is not assignable of parameter of type number because, hey, I want a number and you're returning me string. And if you're using JavaScript, this is fine, but we will get a different value. And the value of that on the second one would be not the summation of the two numbers. And instead, you'll get a number which is 56 because it does not add the numbers, but rather it concatenates it. So now we will have a cleaner code. We will have a more clear way of what we want. Okay, the next. <clears throat> now in this example, we have, instead of two numbers, we sum three numbers. We get the sum of three numbers. And on the add function, or sorry, when we call the add function, we would notice that the squiggly is now until on the add function. And the reason why is because we're only putting three uh, values. Uh, sorry, we're only putting two values instead of three. That's why it has an error of it's expecting to have three arguments but you only got two, okay? So an argument for C was not provided. Now, let's try to add a string at the end of the function here. There. And if we do that, we will also get another error. A squiggly line on the return uh, statement. And the reason why is because we are passing two numbers. So we would expect, if we add those numbers, we would expect a number two, right? But this part on, this, on the 
after the colon part, we added a string there. And it's saying that, hey, you need to return a string. You should return a string. But we're returning a number. So what will ha what happens is that we get an error, uh, a squiggly line saying that you should return a string and not a number. Okay, so that is uh, just a glimpse of TypeScript and what it offers. But there are a lot of uh, features that TypeScript can do to our application. So now let's proceed to Angular and its main features. So I gave three of the main features in Angular, which are the two-way data binding, which we discussed earlier, dependency injection, and directives. So these three concepts are, I think, the most popular and the most used in Angular. So let's start with the two-way data binding. So, the two-way data binding is basically a combination of property binding and event binding. So let's try to understand what property binding is and event binding in order to understand uh, how two-way data binding works. So property binding, it moves a value in one direction from a component's property to a target element's property. So if you have experience with HTML and JavaScript, property binding is basically you have a code in your JavaScript and you want to uh, use the values in the JavaScript code to your HTML. So that's how property binding works. So it also allows us to set values for properties of HTML elements, okay? And in order to understand this more, I'll give you an example. So for example, uh, if you look at the app component HTML, this is just basic HTML and CSS. I did nothing, any Angular code here, okay? So it's saying that on the H3 tag, make it color red and have an I love Angular uh, to show it on the web page, okay? so. Now it's displaying an I love Angular. Now, uh, in Angular, we can put a bracket inside uh, outside the style. So we put a bracket, and inside that bracket, we put a style there, and we add a color red. Now this, you might not understand this one because um, if you notice, it changed into string, right? Now, why, why is it that we change it into string? Because um, when we put the brackets here, it requires a variable or a string and not some CSS property anymore. So we have to convert it into string in order to, to understand, in order for the Angular compiler to understand that. So now in the app component, instead of uh, having a string on the right-hand side of the style, we use a variable called heading color. And there we write the CSS a property color red. And then here on the component, we substitute the, uh, the string into a variable. And then we uh, put it in the style. So now it's still the same. It's displaying I love Angular, but just in an Angular way. And that is very powerful because we could manipulate uh, CSS properties just by doing that and not, and not doing the native HTML JavaScript way. Okay. So now if we change it to color blue, I love Angular will turn into color blue. Okay, now let's go to event binding. So for event binding, it allows us to listen for responses to user actions such as keystrokes, mouse movements, clicks, and touches. So if we try to think about it, when we're using an HTML or CSS or JavaScript rather, 
um, we use an add event listener to a tag in order for it to listen to uh, changes in events. But in Angular, it's already built in. The add event listener is already abstracted from us. And all we got to do is to um, add a parenthesis on the event that we want. So here, for example, the click event, we just have to add a parenthesis uh, on the click. And then we equate it with the function that we want. So what it does here is if we click the change button here, it should uh, run the function change color, which and the, what the function does is it changes the heading color from blue to red. So if we try to play this video, if we click the change button, it should uh, change the color of I love Angular from blue to red. Okay, so now let's go to two-way data binding. So two-way data binding is basically the combination of property binding and event binding. So as we seen a while a while ago, we learned that property binding is from the component to the HTML or the template while the uh, event binding is from the template, from the view to the component. Now, two-way binding is uh, the combination of the two. So an example for that is if we type in the input any text, what should happen is that it should be available or it should automatically update on the uh, component side. So here on my code, I've used an ng model, which is the way in order for Angular to know that we're using a two-way data binding. And we add an interpolation, which is this one, on the input text to know that this input text is a variable from this component. And what will happen is that if we input a value here on the two-way data binding input, then what will happen is that uh, there will be a text shown automatically uh, below the div. So to show you this example, I will play this video. So let's say I type, I love Angular. It automatically gets the value and then shows it in the view, okay? So that is two-way binding, two-way data binding. The next is dependency injection. Now this is a bit complicated if we try to uh, understand uh, how it works, but I will give you a more easier example in order for us to understand this. So basically, dependency injection is a design pattern for creating and delivering some parts of an application to other parts of application that require them. So what it means is that dependency injection is, the purpose of it is it enables different components to communicate to each other. Let's say component one needs some values in component two. With the use of dependency injection, we can uh, do that in our Angular application. And one way of doing that is when we're using services. So Angular services are TypeScript classes and it's used for sharing data or functionality. So one helpful thing in services is that it enables us to reuse code. Like for example, I need a function. I need this function on a different component I need a function in component B. We can only use we could pass we could use one function with the use of services. And to show you an example, let's say I have this service called app.service.ts. And we put a method inside the app service class 
that logs I love Angular. Now, in our component, uh, we don't create a method for that, but instead we use a method that is outside of our component, which is the service. So in order to do that, we have to instantiate it in the constructor and then we call it on the ng on init lifecycle hook. So when the component uh, initializes, it will do the function app service that print message. So it will print I love Angular. And we could do this on different components as well, since it's now in an app service that can be shared across multiple components. So that is um, one of the main features in Angular is using services and dependency injection. So the last one is directives. Directives are basically TypeScript classes that add behavior to elements in your Angular applications. So basically, these are uh, a way of manipulating the document object model without uh, manipulating it straightforward. Like, because if we're using an HTML or in JavaScript, uh, we manipulate it by using a getter or a get element by ID or a query selector. But here in Angular, we don't do that. And the reason why is because Angular has a change detection system that uh, if you use a different uh, method of, if you're not doing it in an Angular way, it could disrupt the change detection system and it could cause some problems in uh, the change detection system. So what we do is we use directives. And uh, the first type of directive is the component directive, which was, uh, which we've seen earlier, this one, the app.component.ts, these are component directives. So almost all the business logic that you do are seen on the component directives. It has a template, uh, which is the HTML and, and the CSS. And other than that, the attribute directives and structural directives don't have any template, but the, what they do is that they manipulate the DOM. So Attribute directives, they change the appearance or behavior of an element. So if you inject an attribute directive to an element tag, uh, let's say a P or a div, it could possibly change its behavior depending on the code that you wrote on the attribute directive. In the structural directives, these are the ngif, ng4. It, it, it does not, it change the, change the behavior, but not in a way of changing its style. It's more of hiding and showing or adding or removing the document object models uh, elements. Okay, so this is the component directive. And then the attribute directive is, for instance, we have an H4 element here. And we added an app red color. If there is no app red color here, probably we would see a black I love Angular, right? But what the, this app red color do is it accesses the uh, H4 element and applies a color of red to this element. So that is an example of an attribute directive. And then for a structural directive, uh, this example that I will show to you is, if you notice the HTML here on the app component, the ngif, that is an example of a structural directive. And what it does is it uh, gets a, Boolean value of either true or false. And if the value is true, it will add this element in the DOM. And if it's false, it will remove that element in the DOM. So let's see the value of is shown here on the component. So is shown is currently false. 
but if we but this function show angular message if we if we run this method the value of this shown would be the opposite of the current value of is shown so if it's false it will be true and if it's true it will be false so if it's currently false if you click the button it should show the p element showing i love angular so i think there's an example let's try to run this example so if we click that button i love angular will show if you click again it will hide so that is the purpose of the structural directive okay so next one is the angular roadmap and i will show to you uh all the concepts in Angular as of 2022, okay? So I'll just navigate on my files here. Well, it's 2023, but probably it's, uh, it's 2022 to 2023 because 2023 is, would probably, there would be massive updates as I've said before. So this would probably have more concepts or more branches that you can see right now. And so I'm going to show you the current one instead of the uh, newer one. Okay. So let's start with the fundamentals. I would say if you're trying to learn Angular, you would probably start with the Angular CLI, assuming that you've learned TypeScript. Okay, so the fundamentals, we start with Angular CLI. It is the uh, uh, CLI version. If you want to generate an app using the CLI, you could use it. If you want to uh, generate components, instead of uh, creating a new file, Angular CLI could do it for you. And the next is the ng modules. And this is very useful in Angular because it helps us manage our components, uh, especially if we want to have some separation of concerns with other components. So we have to study uh, shared modules, feature modules, core modules, and different types of modules. Okay, then the components. So the components has three parts. It has the class, which is the which you could write the business logic there, the template, uh, which is the HTML and CSS, and the metadata, it's the decorator in the class. So it allows you to have different um, metadata or we describe how we describe components, we put it on the metadata. The next, the template syntax. As we've seen, we see the interpolation. It has, it's the one with the two uh, brackets that are curly braces, sorry, yeah. And then property binding, event binding, two-way binding. We've discussed that uh, a while ago. And then we have the pipes. The pipes is used for uh, manipulating the values in the view without really updating it in the component. So it's just a, a view, a view. It's just a way of changing the values on the view. And then we have the template reference variable. It's used, well, it starts with the hashtag and then the name of the variable you want. And it's used for accessing the child or the children. If you want to access the uh, HTML tags, we use a template reference variable so that we could uh, manipulate it in the uh, in our component. And then after that, the directives, which we've discussed also, uh, we have this component directives, structural directive. So it's not only ng if, we have ng for. So it it's instead of an if statement, it's a loop. And then the ng switch, instead of a loop, uh, it's a switch statement. And then for the attributes, we have ng class and ng style. So if you want to manipulate the style, we use ng style. And for the class, ng class. 
also for uh, the attribute directive, we have uh, class binding and the style binding. And then if you want, and in the component or uh, sharing data between components, we have the input and the output. So it's used for uh, sharing from the parent to the child and vice versa. And we have component interactions, which are the lifecycle methods. I think it's eight. And uh, it's used for um, adding functions or methods or adding your business logic every time the life cycle of a specific uh, component runs. So one example we've seen is the on init, but it, there's a lot. And there's like ng on changes, and the ng do check, ng after init, ng view check, after view init, ng content, uh, ng after content init, ng uh ng on destroy so there are a lot and most of the purpose of that is to uh because we have this what we call content projection and in content projection we use ng content the life cycle of the ng content i think it's ng content in it and it's ng content checked and then for the child or for the viewing of child or view of children, we use ng after view init and ng after view check. And then we go to the advanced topics. Yeah. So on the advanced topics, we have services, which we already also discussed. And observables, these are a separate topic. Uh, if you're familiar with RxJS, uh, it's heavily, it's using a lot of observables there. So this is uh, the more advanced topics. HTTP client is used for, um, instead of using a promise and um, getting data from the back end, we use an HTTP client because it is Angular's way of getting responses and getting re sending requests to the to the server and now we have forms so forms there are two types template driven and reactive forms so in template driven forms uh or on reactive forms is i think reactive forms is the most popular because template driven was the i would say the traditional or the older way of doing it since I'm also using reactive forms right now because it's a more uh, versatile. So we have that. And then the routing. So it's Angular's way of navigating to different pages. And we have Angular animations. So this one is, um, I would say it would be almost the same as keyframes and transitions. So, but in an Angular way. So you create Angular animations on the component level and not on the template. And then we have an Angular ecosystem. So state management is NGRX. That is one of the most popular. And that is, um, I think, Angular, the Angular team, I think NGRX was done by the Angular team. But there are also other state management uh, libraries like um, I think I've used ngxs redux also and ngelf I think and then we have angular material uh, which is like the material version of since we're uh, the library that the most common or popular library for user interface is the angular material which is also made by Angular. So you could, I think you could combine Bootstrap and Angular. Yeah, I've done it many times in my projects. And if you want to have a server-side rendering, so if you want uh, Angular on the back end, you could use Angular and Universal. If you need testing, you could use uh, Angular's testing, which is 
Jasmine, Karma, and Protector. And then for miscellaneous, it's if you want to have an internationalization, means that you can have different languages in your application. You could also do that. And accessibility is for if you have audiences or users that are uh, have disabilities, you could also use an uh, accessibility. So these are the concepts in uh, ecosystems in Angular. And I think studying this would be fun. So I enjoyed um, studying most of the fundamentals. But as you move along into the advanced concepts, it gets a bit harder. But I would say I would say it's manageable. Um, it's just that uh, if you're very familiar with the fundamentals, I would say it would be easier to go to the advanced concepts, especially RxJS and NGRx. Okay, so now we've seen the roadmap. Um, I think that's it, and that's all for my talk. So thank you very much if you've learned a lot. So yeah, uh, I'll give back. Uh, I'll give the floor back to Lance now. Thank you. Thank you so much for that very informative and educational uh, presentation, Mr. Machu Oi. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we learned a lot, no, from Angular, no, from uh the tips on what what um uh, important points that we need to take note while learning angular uh yes. the 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 reasons why we need to learn the technology you know, the angular and of course uh, different components that we need to to learn about uh the framework so if you have uh questions to our uh, speakers for tonight, please feel free to sorry, sorry, type into the Q and A uh, session. Okay, uh, we will be welcoming once again, Mr. Sage Villafranca. Hello, Sage, you know, to answer your questions. Okay, so please feel free to to uh to to ask questions okay feel free to ask uh while our research persons are still here okay so um okay um we will be uh adding our pin to our, <laughs> we will be pinning once again our speakers Okay, wait now. So kindly uh, ask questions while our research persons are still here. Okay, wait uh, um There. Okay, good. Okay, so we have a question. Did you try React JS or have you always been building? on angular maybe we'll be answering we will be asking to the both uh, research persons for tonight okay maybe uh seiji did, did you try react js or are you always have you always been building in on, on angular yeah I, yeah for that one actually uh, before i got here in the netherlands uh yeah so once again guys uh, hello so i am back so yeah, I, I've actually used both, so both Angular and React. So before I got here in the Netherlands, so my work was uh, React.net developer. But uh, I started as an Angular developer. So uh, I experienced from Angular 1. So right now uh, I'm using Angular 14. So yeah, I experienced both of uh, both worlds, so Angular and React. So yeah, I, I built also different uh, projects with React and not just in React also, uh, also in React Native. So doing hybrid projects, so especially, yeah, in mobile development. So yeah, I have experienced the both frameworks. 
Okay, good. How about you, Matt? Did you try React.js or have you always been building on Angular? Yeah, uh, so I've been using Angular for five years. And in order for me to enhance my uh, knowledge in front-end technologies, I did study React, but I've never used React in, uh, in the industry or in working or using it in a project. So yeah, that's why when I did my talk, I tried to like only say what I know in, and I did a lot of research because I don't want to say, uh, okay, React is this or something like that. So yeah, uh, probably I would say Angular for five years and React maybe around two to three months. I did some studying and I did some research about it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so before we head to the next question, I would like to mention a comment in the YouTube chat. Okay, according to HK, this is so easy to understand, much better than complex speed demos. Thank you, Matt. Okay. You're very welcome. Okay, so once again, feel free to ask questions in our Q&A box in the Zoom or even chat it on the YouTube channel and we're more than happy to read them. Now, the next uh, question is, since you are very experienced with this framework, what is the one that you dislike or want to change or want to see change? Wow. Maybe let's start with Matt. What, what, what do you think? Hmm. Mm. Uh... I would say if there's something I would change, uh, actually everything about Angular, I like how it's, uh, I like how it's implemented. I like how the framework, uh, requires us like these data. Okay, you need this data. I you just have to provide it. But probably if there is something that I would like to change, maybe the learning curve, or I would like to uh, add on the state management also, because when we're using state management in Angular, especially NGRX, it's kind of uh, cumbersome and repetitive, and it defies the, the dry principle because it has a lot of boilerplate. So, but I think that NGRX is evolving right now. So um, maybe in the future, uh, the Google team, I think the Google team is very aware of it and they're changing it. And there's also a state management that I prefer more, which is NGXS, because it's a more cleaner way of doing state management. So yeah, that's my opinion about it. Great. Thank you, Matt. So uh since okay so for a question for Seiji, since you have been very experienced with this framework what is the one that you dislike or want to yeah. change or what to see change yeah so yeah um actually this is not only coming from me but this is also coming from the beginners or uh the, the one or the developers yeah. starting to learn angular right so yeah actually uh one of i have three answers to that one but it's not really i want to change it but it's one of the hardest and maybe it can be improved. And one of that is uh, mentioned by Matt. So it's not really for Ang it's not really built in in Angular, but it's one of the libraries being used in Angular. So this is state management. But uh, right now we really have a lot of state management available in Angular. So yeah, the number one is mentioned by Matt to so NGRX because this is actually the first one uh, that has been released as a state management for Angular. So uh if you deep dive on NGRX, so it's really complex compared to other existing state management. Why? Uh it follows the pattern of uh Redux or the yeah, the Redux state management, but it has some boilerplate codes. So it has some additional things that you need to learn, such as effects and how to handle the observables and even RxJS on top of that. So it's really not that uh beginner friendly. So it's, uh, when you're starting to learn Angular. So yeah, um, on top of that, I would suggest that 
before using state management as a beginner. So you should first learn Angular itself. So it's not really necessary for you guys, uh, especially those who are starting, uh, to study state management with Angular when you're uh, when you're just starting. So it's really complex. You you might have an overload of information. But um, the good thing about there is, yeah, as Matt mentioned a while ago, there are a lot of alternatives right now, especially in using state management. So number one is NGXS. So it follows uh, the convention of how we build Angular more. So it uses decorators. Uh, it it stays away on how uh, from being a functional programming. It follows as an OOP, so how TypeScript does. And also we have Akita, so it reduces also the boilerplate code of NGRX. So yeah, um, that's what I dislike previously, but Angular, the Angular team and other developers that are involved in open source, they're working on it, so they have created a new state management. So yeah, that's that's number one. So number two is actually I don't want to change it, but it's also complex, especially for the developers coming from React because they don't have this kind of uh, features so which are observables. So, well, you can use observables in React, but it's not that necessary because they have the promises. But in Angular, um, they, they are, um, it's really used, heavily used in Angular. So observables is like a stream on where you uh, push data at the same time, listen to the changes in data. So uh, it's complex and it's kind of hard to understand, uh, especially for uh, starting uh, developers. So why? Because it has also some libraries like RxJS when you want to filter the data, when you want to modify. So it's really complex. But uh, I would say it's powerful, but in terms of how uh it is how is it used so it's really confusing so that's the second uh thing that i think uh, i'm not sure how they would improve it but in terms of how they uh how they teach it or how they demo it so it should be more uh beginner friendly for who especially for those who are starting in angular development then uh i think uh the last one for angular is still the compilation. And um, I guess React still wins that uh, in that case because yeah, as in Matthew's presentation, right? Angular is more of a framework, not a library. But React itself is still a library. So there are a lot of libraries that are um, that are uh, Angular is dependent. So in terms of compilation, yeah, they have the tree shaking, they have the uglify, but still uh, in terms of compilation in runtime, so Angular is still slower compared to React. So in performance-based, React still wins. So I think, but right now, Google is still improving on that. And yeah, we see a lot of improvements in Angular. So there are different techniques and strategies on how can we minify or how can we uh, make our Angular projects faster and performance-wise, it's uh, better. So even though it's an enterprise project. And yeah, and additional to that one, so uh previously what i this is something an angular has already improved also but uh on the it's just in release in angular 15 so these are the standalone components so um in the previous way of how we do angular so before you share uh components that you can share components in different modules so you have to place it in a module first so before it is shared so it you cannot share the component directly in Angular, but right now in Angular 15, so they have actually introduced a new feature, which are the standalone components. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, these are like micro front ends inside Angular. So instead of creating us a module dedicated for that component, so you can use the uh, the component directly. So also acting like as uh, like as a module. So that's uh, that's the disadvantage actually in the previous Angular version. But right now, I think Google uh, heard us on what we want as developers. So they, they have actually created the standalone component. So yeah, that's that's some of the features that um that can be improved and that are already improved by Google. Thank you, KG. I think. Now for our final question. Okay. So thank you again, uh, both uh, Shaji and Matt. 
where should an absolute beginner go first? Can you share a link? The roadmap is really exciting. Or maybe yes. JG can... Uh, yeah, go sure. First. So I'm um, not sure who answered... Uh, who give the question but yeah so i'm not sure um what do you mean by absolute beginner or if you're really starting to learn web development so if you are really starting to learn web development so we will not recommend angular because yeah as matt mentioned a while ago it really has a high learning curve even react also um if you're starting to learn html css or javascript so we do not recommend you to start with frameworks so i can actually give you um a link so i i don't know if you will see it here in our chat but this one so i've typed it so for the benefit of other uh participants as well so this is roadmap.sh so this is actually a good website for you where to start so they will um it will tell you uh where to start what to learn what are the recommended uh technologies to learn what are some or what are the optional frameworks that you can learn but it's still based on your preferences. The important thing there is the sequence. So, but in my uh, personal opinion also, if you are starting to learn about web development, so you should also learn about the internet first. So you, you should know how the internet works. And if you want to go on with the code, yeah, start with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Basically that three, uh, that three technologies is the main or the building blocks of web development. So, yeah, um, Roadmap SH, this is the website. It's, uh, this is a website that is very useful also because I um, I recommend this for most of my mentees and um, not to be overloaded with information. So you, you know where to start and what are the things that you need to learn. Yeah. Thank you, KG. How about uh, you, Matt? What, where should... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I agree with what uh, everything Seiji said. And I just would like to add something. Yeah. Uh, so if, let's say if you're asking if you want to learn Angular as a beginner, because I did learn Angular, like from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I just uh, moved to Angular. So what I would say is that... Um, you have to practice and just be familiarized, familiarize yourself with the concept. So if you want to be good at it, just uh, try and do uh, Angular, code in Angular, and just, just create a project or a very small project. You could start doing that. And because it's really hard to study while uh, listening. I mean, if I do... If I try and create an Angular project, what I would do is I would create the project and then I would identify the problems uh, when building the application instead of uh, learning things first, then uh, trying to code. So you could do what you could do is you could uh, build an application while you're learning. You could you could do that the same at the same time, and it's very uh, effective for me. So yeah. Okay, thanks, Matt. Okay, now since uh we are already uh at the end of our webinar, no. First of all, I would really love to thank uh uh Seiji and Matt for being here at our uh, Angular uh, our Angel Hack uh webinar with Angular Philippines. Thank you so much, uh uh Matt and Seiji. Yep. You're very welcome. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Lance, uh, Harish, and all the Angel Hack team for inviting us yeah. again for another session. And yeah, looking forward again to have a session with you guys. Yeah, thank you very much, Angel Hack, and uh, to everyone who's watching. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Now, before we end our session today, uh, can we hear, okay, let's hear uh, final remarks or from our speakers. So let's start with Matt. Any final remarks? Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you, well, I think Sage already promoted the website. 
uh, our organization. And I would just like to reiterate what he said. So if you want to learn more about Angular, or if you want to join in our community, you could visit uh, angularph.org. And you can follow our Facebook page, which is Angular PH. Also, I think Angular Philippines is our Facebook page. So you could you could ask questions and it's a very friendly uh, community. Uh, a lot of people are active there. So you could ask uh, different types of questions, even if it's not related to Angular, you're very welcome. So yeah, that's uh, my remarks to everyone who's watching here. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, any final remarks, uh, Seiji? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you again, uh, guys, Angel Hack. So as Matt said, you are invited to join us in Angular Philippines. So we have our Facebook page. Uh, yeah, I'll share also, uh, I guess I'll give you the link later then so they can have the presentation. So all of our social handles are there. So we have our Facebook page, we have our Discord, we also have our Facebook group. So yeah, it's a community. Uh, it's a community that you can ask. So we are mentors, but we have also a lot of mentors inside the community. So if you want to learn or if you have some uh, questions about Angular or uh, web development or any uh, technology-related questions, so yeah, you are free on that one. And also, uh, just... Uh, just a short plug for our event. So we also have a monthly meetup. So this usually happens from Friday or Saturday or Sunday. So it's a free event. It's virtual. So you are free to join our um, Angular PH meetup. So we, the, um, we just don't talk about Angular uh, framework, but we also talk about different web technologies and even cloud. So yeah, follow us on our Facebook page and join our group so you can be updated on our events. Yep, that's on. Uh, that's it. And yeah, thank you again, guys, for attending this uh, session. All right. Oh, but before we end, can we have a picture? <laughs> sure. A picture. Our class. Our favorite class picture at Zoom. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the webcam and smile. Okay. Look at the webcam. Smile. Okay, good. Got it. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Now, before we really end this session, don't forget, once again, don't don't forget to follow the 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 uh uh the social media and the the of uh, and the Facebook groups and the Discord and the website of uh, Angular PH uh, to keep updated of what's happening to the community as well. And of course, for uh, Angel Hack, feel free to visit our uh, website, angelhack.com. Don't forget to join our Discord server to continue the conversations on the developer community and keep updated in our monthly newsletter. Thank you once again, but visit our uh, website, angel.com, follow us on LinkedIn, uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, join our Discord channel, Follow us on, subscribe in our YouTube, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Great. So that ends our session this day. And I hope that uh, we'll be seeing each other again in our future events and activities here at Angel. So my name is Michael Lanza, country representative of Angel Hack to the Philippines. And I look forward to see you in the next events and activities of Angel Hack. Goodbye and have a pleasant evening. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.